All right, what's going on, world? Welcome back to another episode of the Plants and PRs podcast. Uh, for the few of you who actually are tuning in, I appreciate you listening. Um, it really means a lot to me. I, I really want to get more involved in the podcast space. I just got to uh, stop being such a little bitch. I get really nervous about it, so I don't know why. I like to talk and I like to ramble, so it should just come naturally to me. I don't know. If you're joining on YouTube, thank you for stopping by, too. Uh, I really, really, really appreciate it. Um, any feedback you want to give me about the show, what I can improve on, what you want me to talk about more, uh, feel free to leave it in the comments below. Uh, if you're on Podbean or whenever I can finally get this uploaded to something else, you want to reach out to me somehow through there or you know on Instagram at Tyler underscore Egan. Uh, you can find me on TikTok at Tyler underscore Egan 24, I think, or the Twitter, Tyler underscore Egan 2. Yeah, let me know what you want me to talk about more and... Um, and some feedback on the show because uh, a friend of mine gave me some and it helped me a lot already. Today's episode, I want to talk about how to lose weight while we're all stuck in quarantine. Now, uh, some people might not be completely stuck in quarantine. Like they might be forced to stay home. Like me, I still have to go to work and I go to the grocery store like once a week. But uh, other people might be stuck at home permanently. You know what I mean? They might live in a big city where you're not allowed to go out at all. Um, and which limits a lot of the things you can do. Uh, so I want to talk today about how to lose weight while we're in quarantine. And, you know, this just kind of applies across the board, whether you're in quarantine or not, whether uh, you have the ability to go outside all the time or not. Like these, 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 these rules, these basic principles apply regardless. But I think it's even more crucial now with everything going on with uh, COVID-19. Um, you know, I... I, I look at the numbers occasionally. I, I follow it very briefly. I follow the state more than anything, but I follow it very briefly because I, I don't believe anything the fucking media says. I don't believe the government half the time. I, I it, They make it real easy. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I've i noticed that the, the American numbers are, like, through the roof. Like, I think we're well, well past... Um, Every, I think we just passed Italy in deaths. Uh, granted, we have more people than them. Um, you know, obviously, we passed China, Spain. We're leading the fucking pack. Go figure. Um, but it's also like, hold on, I'm on my laptop, too, right in front of me. And it's like, well, our numbers keep climbing, and I wonder why. I mean, we're the greatest country in the world, and... We have all this money and all this stuff. And I'm not saying that we're not, I don't give a shit if we're the greatest country in the world. What I'm saying is, why are our, why are our numbers rapidly growing and, and it seems like everybody else isn't? Now, could the other countries be lying? Sure. I don't fucking care about that, to be honest with you. I really don't. My, my agenda isn't with political bullshit. It's, it's with this. Um, because, like, the American... Uh, Okay, so by the 2019, I'm pulling this off Wikipedia, it's the first thing I found, but by 2019, fig, uh, figures from the CDC found that more than one-third of the U.S. adults uh, are obese, and 17% of our children are obese, so we wonder why our numbers are rapidly going through the roof with all this stuff. It's like, are, we are unhealthy. Uh, how do you expect your body to fight off a disease that like medicine can't cure? when your body can't handle anything. You know what I mean? Like your body's too busy trying to figure out how to control itself while you're obese or overweight or all these other things. I mean, with with being overweight comes, and I, I'm sorry if I offend anybody by saying this, but, it, but with being overweight, isn't just it's not just a thing. Like you're not just overweight and everything else is perfectly healthy. With being overweight, you start to, your joints can't handle the load that you are giving them. And your, your body can't function the way it's supposed to because it's trying to figure out what to do about all the aches and pains and all the fat buildup in your arteries and all these other things. So we can't expect our bodies to be able to handle the fact that, um, that, the throat, that we're getting a new disease thrown at us with no kind of cure, nothing to, to handle it. You know what I mean? I don't think it's fair. So that's why I believe our numbers are skyrocketing. And... Um, yeah, you know what I mean? I just think we're unhealthy. I, I, I don't know about other countries, honestly. I'm not really too sure at all. I don't know their obesity ratings. I don't quite care uh, because I live in America and it's relevant to me here. And what I want to do is help people become healthier and feel better in their bodies. Now, I'm not saying everybody has to look like me or skinny. 
or jacked like other people, but I'm just saying like become your own version of healthy. I don't believe you can be fat and be healthy. I don't believe you can be obese and be healthy. I'm, I'm never going to believe that. Science says otherwise, and I believe in science. So, uh, yeah. So that's why I believe we are seeing our numbers go through the roof right now. And um, other countries aren't keeping up with us, I guess, for lack of a better phrase. So... That leads me to today's topic. Sorry for the rant, man. I can go on. I'm, I'm gonna, I swear I'm going to make this short. Uh, I just, sometimes I like to rant and sometimes I lose my train of thought and I'm all over the place today. Uh, anyway, so yeah, that's why I want to talk about today's episode, uh, how, to, how to lose weight, maintain weight, um, stay healthy while we're in quarantine. And it really comes down to this, my friends. It comes down to calories in versus calories out. At the end of the day, our bodies... Uh, we, you know, food is energy and that's what we live off of. Sorry, I'm going to bring up my textbook for one of my NASM courses. I want to read this. Body weight is determined by the energy intake on one hand and energy expenditure or like burning calories on the other hand. We take in and expend energy to perform the daily work required for survival. You know, everything we do on a daily basis, like we burn energy doing it, like even getting up out of bed walking to the kitchen and cooking breakfast, you're burning a calories. Um, walking out to your car and turning it on, you're burning calories. Uh, everything we do requires energy, and food is energy. So when we take in more energy than we're expending, we're going to put on weight. Now, it, I don't know if that's as simple as I'm, to me it sounds like, but then again, I've been dealing with this stuff for a, lot, a little bit longer now. Uh, but it really is that simple. Like, if you're going to eat a bunch of food, your body has to expend it. And a lot of the times, we might not feel full from the food we're eating, and that's because our, the food we're eating isn't nutritionally dense. There's nothing in it. Like, if we eat a cupcake, it's just flour, sugar, f- f- butter, and I don't even know what else because I don't really make cupcakes. But um, it's just a bunch of shit piled up and cooked nicely to look nice. I don't know. But there's nothing in there, you know what I mean? Whereas if you were to eat, um, look around my house, oatmeal, uh, that's nutritionally dense. It has fiber and all these other things that are going to fill you up. So that's why it may not feel like you're eating a thousand calories with one cupcake, but you realistically are. There's just a lot of other stuff in there. So you got to, if you're going to eat stuff like that, you better be working your ass off. I mean, some people... Uh, we all, all of our metabolism metabolisms work differently. Like I have a very fast metabolism. It's like I'm realistically I'm like legit eating four thousand calories a day right now, and it's ridiculous. But I have a fast metabolism. I'm very active. Uh, I work out once a day. I go for like a forty five minute walk after work. My my job is very physically demanding at times. Um, so I'm burning a lot of calories. So I can eat a lot more. And on top of that, I'm eating foods that are nutritionally dense. They take a lot to expend in your body, which brings me to another point um, about like when it comes to calories in versus calories out and you burning calories. Another thing is our food has a thermic effect in our body. So if you eat shitty foods, it's like if you were to eat um, Doritos, let's say, they I don't know why I always do use Doritos as my example. It, mostly because I used to Sweet chili Doritos were my jam. But um, Doritos, there's nothing nutritionally dense in there. There's no fiber to slow down the digestion process in your body. So your body will digest Doritos like that because it's just shit, uh, for lack of a better phrase. And I don't know enough of the science lingo to say it. Plus, I don't know if people would even understand that. If people want to understand more of the science behind things, let me know. But anyway, so it doesn't take your body, it's not hard for your body to digest uh, something like Doritos or some cupcakes or something like that. And you can Google this. Please don't ever believe what I say. Uh, Go do your own research, form your own opinion, but I just want to open the the topic up for discussion, I guess. Uh, But anyway, so your body doesn't, doesn't take much for your body to digest Doritos. But again, if you were to eat oatmeal, they are a little bit more slow digesting because of the fiber in them and all of the, the nutrients that come from it. You know, the harder it is for your body to, and I shouldn't say harder, that's a bad way to phrase it. The more nutritionally dense uh, food is, the longer it takes for your body to be able to break down and digest it, which burns more calories, believe it or not. There's a thermic effect of, on food. So if you eat more nutritionally 
dense foods, it'll be um, a longer process for your body to digest it. So it'll burn more calories in the long run. Now, it's not like a gigantic thing. I think uh, somewhere in my textbook, it says, um, although thermic effect of food is estimated to be approximately 10% of energy intake. Um, now that's just a rough estimate uh, because it depends on, again, what you eat. You know, I can eat 2,000 calories of McDonald's and you could eat 2,000 calories of whole plant foods. And the way our bodies digest them, um, the, the thermic effect of the food will be differently because the McDonald's isn't nutritionally dense. It's going to take longer. Or it's, going to t- it's going to be shorter digestion period, so it's not going to burn as many calories, if that makes sense. On the other hand, if you eat 2,000 calories of plant, whole plant foods, it takes a lot longer for your body to digest it. Your body's working harder to digest the food, therefore it's burning a little more calories. Again, this isn't something that's like a gigantic deal breaker when it comes to... Um, uh, calorie intake, like calories in versus out, but it's it's a thing to think about. You know that's why I tell people they should eat real food. Um, it it has it, it definitely has an effect. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't really know what else to say about it. You can't. I mean that's why like I I get a little frustrated when people say like uh, calorie intake is all that matters. And you know you've seen people on YouTube make videos about how uh, they did like a fucking 2000 or a McDonald's only diet and lost weight. Now, I mean, I'm not denying the fact that calories in versus calories out is the number one principle, but I think people should also be eating real foods in the process. Um, and then it like, you know, the other thing is with the energy in versus energy out is you have to be performing things to burn energy, uh, to burn calories. Calories are energy to make that clear. You know what I mean? It's the same thing. Calories, um, like your body needs energy, food is energy. We just kind of put it into calories, I guess, to simplify it. I'm not too sure. Again, don't ever just listen to what I have to say. If this is something that you really want to look into and you kind of believe what I'm saying, do some research. It, it, it's, there's a lot of different opinions out there, so this is just mine. Got some coffee, baby. If you hear me sipping that on the podcast, I'm sorry, that's probably weird. Um, so yeah, burning, burning energy, uh, burning calories, moving your body. Um, you know, there's different ways to do it. I like, I like lifting weights and, uh, I play volleyball. So that's where I, I lean, but I guess the biggest thing that I try to shift my message more towards lately is just move your fucking body. At the end of the day, just move your body. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to be in the gym lifting weights. You don't have to be doing yoga. You don't have to be riding bikes. You could just be playing baseball with your son every day. Uh, you could be um, playing basketball by yourself right now if you have a, a basketball net out front of your house or something. Um, I'll go outside and just hit the volleyball by myself. I mean, it sucks. I'd rather be playing a real game, but it's just it's it's a way to move my body. I got an old shitty bike from someone who left it at my job, so I've been riding that thing around town. It sucks, but it's the way I can move my body. I'm limited right now. Uh, I have, uh, if you're on YouTube, you can see ish in the background there, there's some of my dumbbells and my free weights and uh, I guess you can't see my bands hanging up over there but you know that's what I've been doing at home because it's just kind of the hand we're dealt but like just move your body in whatever way you can in um whatever makes it most enjoyable for you like my parents have been walking my dog or my my family dog through all this stuff I, I don't really know if they've done anything else um but that's one way for them to keep their bodies moving you know I'm all for whatever you got I do believe people should be doing some resistance training to strengthen muscles and correct postural imbalances. I mean, how many people do we have out there with back pain? I'm one of them. And I'm noticing from the, the more mobility I gain in my hips, my mid-back, my upper back, um, my ankles and stuff like that, all my aches and pains are starting to go away. So I think doing things like yoga are very, very beneficial. But that's neither here nor there. Um, move your body. That's, that's all I'm trying to preach here. Uh, the more you move your body, I guess, in theory, the more you can eat, but I wouldn't recommend, recommend that either. Um, because, you know, if you're someone who's trying to lose weight, just because you burn an extra couple hundred calories doesn't necessarily mean you should be eat, adding that on, you know what I mean? Even for me, I shouldn't be doing that either. Um, your body adjusts quickly uh, to, well, not sometimes quickly, but your body will adjust to your metabolism. Like, as I've eaten more calories, my body's adjusted. Uh, it happens, too. When people usually plateau at weight loss, it's because their body adjusts now and they have to lower their calorie intake even more, you know? 
uh, that's why that's why I'm saying like you may like your app might tell you you're burning 400 calories, but I wouldn't trust it. So I would just leave your calorie intake alone when it comes to stuff like that. I mean, another reason, like another reason why. Like one thing people try to do a lot of the time when it comes to losing weight is they try to starve themselves and they skip a lot of meals, eat very minimally. And I don't have necessarily science to back this up, but this is my opinion on that. Um, people like your body can't, your metabolism can't kickstart if you're not doing anything to kickstart it. Your, like your food turns on your metabolism from my understanding. Now I could have that completely fucked up. And if I do, someone please tell me. Um, but yeah, so like if you're not eating food, you can't expect your body to do anything, you know what I mean? And not to mention eating is what gives you energy throughout the day. So if you have low energy to begin with and you're starving yourself trying to lose weight, it's just not the way to do it. Your body's never going to function properly. You need a certain amount of fats to, uh, kickstart hormones in your body, which do help with, uh, weight loss, like testosterone. Women have testosterone in their body too. Men have estrogen. It's a, it's a thing. Um, Yeah, uh, carbohydrates, like that's our, our body's primary source of fuel. So if you're starving the body of carbohydrates, I'm not saying keto can't be beneficial in its own way um, because your body will use other sources for energy, but carbohydrates are the main source of energy. So starving yourself, again, is not going to help you in that case. And protein, you need protein in your body. It's not the end-all be-all that people make it out to be, in my opinion, of course, but it is... Uh, something our body needs. Uh, our body needs it to maintain muscle uh, tissue and, th- and things of that nature. Um, if What happens is if you deprive your body of carbohydrates uh, and fats, then you will, uh, your body will go to muscle tissue next for, to turn that muscle tissue into sugars in the body. I think this process is called gluconeogenesis. I'm proud of myself to remember that. It's like my new favorite word. Um, so yeah, your body will go to muscle tissue next for energy. So it'll turn that muscle tissue, those, those proteins, into sugars. And from there, your body will gain energy. So your body will... That's why people who like uh, have some of those um, eating diseases, and I'm not front coming at them at all, but that's why they all look so skinny and frail because their body didn't have uh, carbohydrates to fuel them. So then it went to muscle tissue next, or carbohydrates and fats. Then it went to muscle tissue next. It took the proteins, turned it into energy, Boom, that's why they all start turning into sticks. Um, you're depriving the, the, the body of, uh, what do you call it, energy. So then it goes to the next source after the food we intake, and that's our, the muscle, our, the proteins in our muscle. So that's why you shouldn't starve yourself. I mean, you need, you need food to fo- function properly. It, you need energy to kick on certain processes in your body in order to... Uh, to actually lose weight. I mean, if you don't eat, your body will just kind of shut down. That's why I don't really understand the water fasting stuff. And like intermittent fasting has its place. It's not the end all be all. People may not make it out to be either. But I mean, it's a good way to restrict calories. It really is. Um, I did it for a little bit, but then I realized that it's not a good way to put on weight. So these are all things that, like, again, I suggest you look into. Intermittent fasting can be very beneficial. Um, but it's definitely something to research. Not, it's not for everybody. I mean, some people can't, like, they just get cranky if they skip a breakfast. Like, then don't do it. Uh, you can always cut your calories off later in the day. So for, what people, if, for people who may be interested and don't know, intermittent fasting, you just kind of have an eating window, more or less. So you will uh, eat for eight hours, not eat for 16. Like I said, it's, an easy, it's a good way to restrict calories because it's a lot easier to restrict yourself to 2,000 calories in like an eight-hour eating window, ooh, excuse me, rather than uh, uh, a 16-hour eating window throughout the day. You know what I mean? You start with breakfast and then you go up to your snack right before dinner or right before, um, <laughs> right before bedtime. You know, you have fucking, I don't know, 12 to 16 hours of eating right there. Of course, it's going to be, you're not going to be able to, that's going to be tough for somebody like me who likes to eat to fit 2,000 calories into a big-ass window like that. Psh, yeah, right never going to happen. So yeah, I mean, it, it, it comes down to that guys. It's, I don't know if I got too far off topic there. Um, if I did, please let me know. I hope this was helpful. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's the basics of fucking, what are we talking about here? Jesus Lord. God, I got to stop smoking weed. 
Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Whatever. Um, but yeah, that's that's the the basic principles of, of weight loss, guys. It's energy in versus energy out, regardless of you having the capability of doing your normal normal days where you're where you're working at the restaurant and going to the gym and, and this that and the other thing to you staying at home all day and being stuck inside. Uh, you still got to get up, move your body to burn some of those calories, or you're going to put on weight. I'm not saying you can't use this time to do whatever the fuck you want, but. For my friends and family out there who may complain later that they gained weight because they were stuck inside, you did that to yourself. It goes to ev- for everybody, even myself. You know what I mean? That's why I'm holding myself accountable to get shit done during this time. So, yeah, these are the basic principles, guys. Energy in versus energy out. It doesn't matter the situation, you know? Just because our circumstances are different, it doesn't, give us, it doesn't change the principles of losing weight. Uh, there's a thermic effect of food. You got to make sure you're eating calorie or nutri- nutrient dense foods. Um, it'll make it harder for your body. Damn, I shouldn't explain it that way. It'll make it more challenging for your body to digest quickly. Therefore, it'll burn a little bit of calories in the process. Uh, got to stay hydrated too. That's super important. Drink water. Um, but yeah, eating real food, it's a thing. You should do it. It's better for you anyway. Um, and yeah, just moving your body, just doing whatever you possibly can to, to move your body. Um, I, like, I legit do dumping jacks in the morning, like in my living room right here, because I can. And I want to move my body, get myself loosened up in the morning. Riding this shitty bike around town just to move my body. Playing volleyball by myself in the backyard because I just need to move my body. Just move your body. It doesn't have to be anything crazy, you know? There's plenty of things on the internet. If you need help with a program, I got you. Hit me up. And yeah, just uh, don't, don't use this time as an excuse. Use this time as a, as a time to grow. Um, you can get swole like me if you want, or try to, because as you can see, I'm not that beefy. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, thanks for checking out the podcast. I hope you found this helpful. And uh, let me know what else you want me to cover. Um, let me know. I'm thinking about doing a YouTube video on uh, correcting upper body posture. Some things I've tried and helped me and things like that. So if that's something you're interested in too, let me know. Let me know what you would want me to cover more. If you're just looking for exercise ideas, if you're looking for kitchen ideas, healthier alternatives, whatever you want, I'm down to cover. I think that's it. Drink more water. Stay safe. Stay the fuck home if you can. And yeah, fucking love you guys. Peace. Peace.